Okay, folks, I'm very sorry, but the bookstore has to close, and they're making a stop, so we're gonna have to cut the line off right here. <laughs> okay, right here. Well, this sucks. What are you doing? I'm selling Ian Stark t-shirts. You had t-shirts printed up for this? No, I'm just selling his t-shirts. How are you holding up? This is torture. If one more person gushes over me, I'm gonna throw up. You look like hell. Thank you. Ian Stark, you are so great. Thank you. Could you, uh, could you pretend to strangle me and could you take our picture? Every year I do a wacky Christmas card. That sounds wacky. <laughs> All right, I got it. Okay, she's got it. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, last one. <clears throat> Ian Stark! Yeah. Ian freaking Stark! <laughs> I read Below Ground 46 times. Big fan. Big fan. I bought one of your chewed up pens on eBay. <laughs> will, will you use it to sign? Uh, that's not mine. I never chew pens. Then Merlin 464 at CompuSite.org will pay and pay dearly. <laughs> okay, look, uh, look, let me, let me help you out there. Okay, look. There you go. This Merlin guy owes me big. <laughs> so what's your name? Rod DeBelco. My friend calls me Rattlesnake Rod. <laughs> he didn't want to at first, but I made him. <laughs> hey, so, um, I'm just, could you make it out to my biggest fan? Because that, that's what I am. I'm, I'm your biggest fan. And I could prove it, too. Pick a page. Excuse me? Pick a page. From your book. 63. Uh, in the hot August sun, for 12 years he had dreamed of revenge. How many times while standing in line at the bank or while waiting to fill up his car at the Texaco station had he gotten caught up in the fantasy? Of oh, wow. That's amazing. Uh, 241. Uh, was at the very least holding back the truth. You're lying and we both know it, said Thomas with a healthy dose of fear in his young face. First page. Uh, Library of Congress catalog card number 9523459. This is a work of fiction. All dates, characters, places. <laughs> That's amazing. That's creepy. <laughs> What's your girlfriend's glove size? Six and a half. That's creepy. <laughs> okay. Okay, well, that's it. We gotta go. I'll get my coat. Uh, Ian Stark. Rah. <laughs> See ya. Um, what, what, what's your favorite part from uh, Below Ground? Um, the confessional tone that opens the window into the mind of a killer. It's, who, who are you? I'm Henry McNeely, Mr. Stark's editor. Editor? Yeah. So, he writes words and you cut them? Oh, where are they? I, Give them back to me. I, I, Give me back the words! <laughs> okay, I think you're using the term editor too literally. I help Mr. Stark through the writing process. Oh, oh. Do you write? Uh, actually, some poetry. So, no. <laughs> I mainly make suggestions and help mold. Oh, and, and you get to be around him a lot? Yes. Oh, I could do that. I could mold. Actually, it takes... I could mold! <laughs> yes, I'm sure you're no stranger to mold. Ian Stork? Rod? It's a friend of mine, Matty. Hi. Hi. Hey, uh, what, what's, your, what's your favorite part of Below Ground? Oh, um, I'd have to say all the stuff that happened uh, below ground. So, who's up for sushi? Wait a minute. <laughs> Wait a minute. Whose death inspired Thomas's reign of vengeance? Oh, you know, um, what's his name? His uh, name is Mom. <laughs> you didn't read it. You never read it? Yeah, well, I tried, but it scared the hell out of me. I can't believe you never read it. Well, it's just that... I can't read, okay? Are you happy? I can't read! <laughs> All right, I'll read it. Batty Bunker's crazy, Lupe Luna hazy. Chaotic, neurotic, peculiar, and amazing. Demented, deranged, particularly strange. Panic, ready, shaky, flaky, making me insane.
Ew. <laughs> Sorry about this. Wouldn't fit in the trash chute. That's okay. Henry, come on. Honey, I'm already late for work. It's a 15-second elevator ride. You can hold your breath. I am not going into an art gallery smelling like... Diapers and Indian food. <laughs> yes. Henry. Oh, all oh, right. Henry! Hold your breath! Uh-oh. What happened? I think the elevator's stuck. <laughs> oh, no. I'm claustrophobic. I'm gonna start sweating. This is gonna cost you, Henry! And they gotta go. <laughs> matter with you? Oh, I'm reading below ground. I just got to the part where he kills the girl in her apartment and was freaking me out, so oh, I... He doesn't kill her in the apartment. He waits until she gets out into the... Enjoy. <laughs> I'm sorry I'm late. Tess got stuck in my elevator. Why do you smell like a daycare center in Calcutta? <laughs> well, you see, there was this guy... Oh, inspiring bathroom, Ian Stark. Oh. See, um... Are you the only one who showers up there? Oh, well, no. Oh. Well, can you show me which is your hair? Then I won't have to buy it from that guy on eBay. There's a guy who sells your hair on eBay? Uh, Rod, you remember Henry. The molder. What is he doing here? Hey, Ian Stark, can I check out the rest of your pad? Knock yourself out. Oh, my doctor told me to stop doing that. Page 261. Except for the blade of the cold, steely knife, it's good to see you, Mr. Richards. It's been a while, Thomas said, never taking his <laughs> eyes off. Unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, like having your very own psychotic jukebox. <laughs> hey, Ron, I saw that memory thing you did there. Go on, quiz me on a page. 204. No, 162. <laughs> To even find you? I don't know. I just went down to get my paper and there he was. And you just let him right into your house? I like him. We've been having a good time. He is weird. You're right, Henry. He's weird. So better not talk to him. Don't even make eye contact. And whatever you do, don't let him into your house or he might start to think he's part of the world. That's not what I'm saying. What are you saying? Okay, that is what I'm saying. <laughs> he's weird. Oh, so it's all right for him to spend what little money he has on my book, which, by the way, pays your salary and mine. Don't you think you're overreacting a bit? He's the reason I'm not living on the street, stealing breadsticks off tables at outdoor cafes. You do that now. For fun, not survival. <laughs> Look, I just have a strange feeling about the guy who sold me this suit. Hey, it's the roster. So, uh... I decided I, I want to be an editor. Oh, yeah, that's that's nice. Ian's editor. <laughs> I'm Ian's editor. Yes, yes, but you don't have the bite. <laughs> yes, well, while that may be true, I don't have the bite. Hi. <laughs> I do have lots of experience. I went to Yale. I went to Yale. You don't get it, do you? Do you? I know what's in his head. We're like twins inside the womb, he and me. He and I. Not you, me. <laughs> Did you listen? Hmm? Yeah. You're going down, friend. <laughs> Unlike your elevator, snip, snip. <laughs> what? Snip, snip. It was a reference to when I cut the power on your elevator. Snip, snip, two wires. Thought that was clear. Ian? Hey, who took all the shower hair? I got customers. <laughs> you were in my building? Yeah. You broke into the elevator room? 
Yeah. <laughs> so what you're trying to say is you're the one who cut the power to my elevator? Please don't make me go through this again. You're going to suck all the fun out of it for me. <laughs> Ian Stark? Rod. Ian, would you, uh, can I talk with you for a second? Rod, would you excuse us, please? We have to discuss some publishing release dates. <laughs> Wait outside on the balcony. Gotcha. that excited to come over. This is serious. I... Oh. He's looking right at us, so smile and pretend like we're talking about something else, okay? <clears throat> Rod is a psycho. <laughs> Our lives are in danger. Or more specifically, my life. Now laugh. <laughs> You're being ridiculous. Am I? He, he just threatened me after he admitted to cutting the power to my elevator. I'm telling you, we've got a bona fide stalker on our hands. <laughs> right, now stop. I can't, you're funny. Cut the power to my elevator. You think you could fix my blender? Would you stop it? I'm being serious. <laughs> All right, Henry, I'll talk to him, but he's not going to hurt you. How do you know? Let's just say I have an instinct about guys like this. And I'll bet I'm right. 70% of the time. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I don't want to know we were discussing this. But wait a little while and it'll be very subtle. Gotcha. Rod, are you a stalker? <laughs> Publishing release dates. <laughs> Thank you. Did you threaten Henry? No. Did you cut the power to his elevator? Some of it. That was very, very bad. Now, watch your language. <laughs> Rod, have a seat. Listen. Rod, I know what it's like to walk around with a circus in your head. There's noise and lights, and everywhere you look, people are having a good time, and then suddenly you realize that you're on the wrong side of the cage, and there's no cotton candy for you. That doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. When you look in those wiggly funhouse mirrors, and all you can see is your high school guidance counselor, and he's got Ritz cracker eyes and candy corn teeth, and he's laughing at you while your father swings from his belt. Okay, now you lost me. Just, just stop snipping Henry's elevator wires, okay? Take all that junk inside your head and try to channel it into something useful, like I did. But I, I can be your editor. I'm sorry, buddy. Henry's my editor. What if, for some reason, Henry weren't able to fulfill his responsibilities as editor? Then wouldn't his responsibilities fall to the next runner-up? No, no, that's a beauty pageant. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rod, but the, the position's filled as long as Henry's around. Oh, great. Why don't you just tell him I bleed liquid gold? <laughs> okay, then. I guess I know what I gotta do. What does that mean? What, what do you gotta do? Thank you, Ian Stark. You're gonna be all right? Yes, I'll be great. I can smell that cotton candy right now. All right. Come on, I'll ride down with you. Hey, Yale. I'm gonna blow you away. What does that mean, blow me away? Oh, no. You're not gonna suck the fun out of this, too. Come on. Henry, I told you I'm not getting in that awful thing. <sighs> Honey, we will do this together. We're going to get on this elevator, and I promise everything is going to be okay. Um, uh, Tess, this is Rod, Ian's friend I was telling you about. What are you doing? I promised I was going to blow you away. Oh, no. Here it goes. No, please. Ah. Huh? 614 pages. You wrote all this in two days? I didn't get any sleep, so forgive me if I'm acting a little pokey. Go ahead, read it. I, I can't read this here and now. He will if you let me go. 
You know, Ian likes it when I take his pages to my office and read them there. Okay, then you do that. Okay. I'll call you when you're finished. How will you know? I'll know. <laughs> oh, thank God, that was awful. Hello again. Hi. Oh, sorry. My cat died. <laughs> Guess what severely incapacitated man wrote 600 pages in two days? Stop throwing Stephen King in my face. <laughs> I'm talking about Rod. Please get him to stay away from me. He wrote something? Here, I made you your very own copy. I wanted to keep mine in case there's a trial. <laughs> wow, I'm impressed. I didn't even know he could write. He can't. Here, I'll treat you to a passage. Donut, donut, God, I want a donut or a pickle. I'm in a pickle, I thought to myself, as I looked at myself in my own mirror, which was actually the light green juice in the pickle barrel of monkeys in the zoo, swinging back and forth, back and forth, which, of course, leads to 16 pages of the letter K. <laughs> Before we get into a 72-page description of, quote, his mama's back. <laughs> Okay, so it's a little rough. He wants me to edit it. Then edit it. <laughs> yeah, that shouldn't be too hard since there's no pesky punctuation to get in the way of a 600-page sentence. <laughs> Henry, Henry, you know, when I first started writing, it wasn't so polished, but somebody saw the potential in it. <laughs> there's no potential in that. <laughs> well, come on, 600 pages, I mean, must be something of value. There was, but then he typed all over it. Why are you defending this guy? Uh, you, you are so rigid. You know, James Joyce was weird. Van Gogh was weird. Stravinsky was weird. You know, talent doesn't always come wrapped up in a nice new shiny little box, Henry. Sometimes it's messy and organic and raw, and you might just have to look a little deeper to find it. And sometimes when it's messy and organic and raw, it's garbage. A few years ago, I could have come up to you looking just like him, with a pile of pages. Let me ask you something, Henry. Would you have seen a bestseller or just some garbage to laugh about with the guy in the next cubicle? If you had handed me this, yeah, that's exactly what I would have done. Well, if you don't get him, maybe you don't get me. <laughs> Last call. Wait, wait, wait. I'm still working. Why are you suddenly so invested in this guy? Because Ian is. And because I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Henry, I seriously doubt this whack job's going to surprise you. Ah! <laughs> what do you think? I think I just swallowed a contact lens. <laughs> ah, look who's here. The girl who pretends to be Ian Stark's friend. For your information, I finished the book. What's Thomas's middle name? Nigel. What color is Claudia's car? Candy apple red. Why don't girls like me? They're all lesbians. I knew it! <laughs> so? Um, so I've been working all day, and uh, there are a few changes I'd like to make. Well, not too many, I hope. I, I just finished the sequel. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, on the first page, there were a few words that I liked, uh, and I grouped them together into a sentence that I liked. Uh, Uncle, I start... come on, just cut to the chase. You really think there's a book here? I think that if you're willing to put a lot of time into it and take some notes and maybe slow your pace down to something less than a book a day... Henry, stop. Oh, wait, he was just getting to the good part. I don't think there is a good part. I'm sorry, buddy. Henry, you were right, you were right. I hate saying it, but... This whole thing is a mess. Although I am curious to meet your mama. <laughs> what should I do? Start over? Okay, it's like this. You buy a pair of shoes, but they don't fit. So you, so you go barefoot, but you feel every jagged rock and shard of glass until finally you meet a gypsy woman who makes you a tuna sandwich. And then instantly, you sprout wings. That doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does. <laughs> Writing is the thing that works for you, 
I've got to find a thing that's right for me. Exactly. Well, what is the right thing? Uh, who knows? Maybe it's fixing cars or, or working with wood or painting. Painting? That's a great idea. Painting? That's brilliant. I bet you'd make a great painter. Do you really think so? Absolutely. Your girlfriend works in an art gallery. How did you know that? <laughs> Henry's girlfriend can show my paintings in her art gallery. You have paintings? I will tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you.